Let me start off with just asking how you guys doing. Well, it's up and down. Um, we're still, I mean, just kind of confused and kind of feel... It's like it's, I mean, I just, like, I feel like I could pick up my phone and call Shanann and talk about how sad I am, and yeah. it just doesn't, I mean, it doesn't feel real. You know, last time we talked about, there were more than friends. At this point, they were like family. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, at times they were. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's still just not real, like. Like see, like like seeing the press conferences and stuff like that. It just seems, it almost seems removed. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, the the person they're talking about isn't who, somebody we know. Right. Um, yeah. To be it's honest, different. Though, to be honest, isn't it kind of somebody you didn't know? Though? Right. I mean, that's what we learned. <laughs> I mean, we thought we thought we knew him. Um, didn't think he was ever capable of doing anything like this. I mean, there was no, at any of our times of hanging out, there was no signs of that he was ever capable of doing something like this. Um, and I think Amanda and I latched onto that, like, and that's why we were kind of there for him. Um, yeah. And it's just, we couldn't, we couldn't see that to be a possibility. Uh, <laughs> um. Last time I talked to you guys, you were really leading search efforts online. You were doing everything you can to find Shanann and her daughters. What was it like when you, when you heard the sad outcome? I, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't believe it. Um, like, I mean, you hear all the time that news, news is wrong. You know, like it's, they don't have the correct information and. It wasn't until the detective called me, like right as the conference was going on and asked me to come pick up Dieter, that it hit. And then I just, I just broke down from there, so. Yeah. What's the dog's name? Dieter. Dieter. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, he's a little wiener dog, a um, little Dotson, I guess. Um, super cute, very friendly. Mm -hmm. He loves to give kisses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why did they ask you guys to take the dog? You know. So I'm not sure. Like I know Amanda reached out last night because we were concerned. Like obviously Chris is still at the police station. He was at our house all night last night. Like that dog needs cared for. So managers reached out and said, hey, is somebody doing this or can we go get them? Um, but that was just a voicemail. Um, when I spoke to Shanann's mom this morning, she told me that she told the FBI to call us to get them. So I'm not sure really um, what somewhere. drove it. Somewhere yeah. they got our name to say, hey, come. The family's trusting you, I guess, to care for their dog. Um, aside from the dog, you didn't just let the dog into your house. You let Chris into your house, too. Yeah. After the fact of everything happened, um, you have a little girl that fell in Celeste's age. In hindsight, what's going through your mind? That... Regret. Regret? I mean, that's something I'll never forget, that we, we allowed this guy in our house. I mean, had we... Had we had any inclination that we we thought he was involved at all, no way would I have let him in my house with my wife and kid. Um, so he slept right across the hall from her. Right. I mean, she came in that morning and, and we saw it was like I, I saw Mr. Chris. Uh, you know, because I mean, their doors are right by each other. Um, um, and so that I feel, I just I'm never going to forget. It's just a haunting memory now at this point. Like. Yeah. No way did we know <laughs> he he could have been capable of something like this. I mean, yeah. on the phone, Amanda, you told me repeatedly, or you told me that you were kept replaying the conversation from the past few days over and over in your head. Why are you Why are you doing that? 
honestly just I mean <laughs> I'm just beating myself up about it like oh he said this or he said that like I should have I should have known that that was a flag but it or just, was it a flag or, or you was know what it I mean a, like yeah. questioning just every little thing that we did with him um yeah what were those conversations that you don't mind me asking what were some of the things you you know you are questioning of was that a sign um well there's a few things that we talked to the detective about we're not sure if it's a part of the investigation so that's we don't want to get too specific yeah we don't want to um, get into that um but I mean, just little things here and there, like watching, watching him on his phone and pacing the house and eating the pizza, even <laughs> like I just, he showed zero remorse. Like there was no doubt in our minds that he was innocent. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, while we were with Chris on Monday and, and Tuesday, it was more on Tuesday though. Um, I mean, our, our conversations were kind of far in between. Like it was a lot more of silence. Um, Amanda and I are on our phones just trying to come up with any sort of idea of like, um, what about this? What about, you know what I mean? Just trying to think through everything and through those just little things, you know, a few things came up that we thought, well, that's weird that you're not wanting to look more into that. Like that seems like big deals. And as soon as we left the house, we called the detective uh, and we're just like, we don't know if this is something, it might be something, but we feel like we need to say something. Um, I mean, again, it was a voicemail. I didn't, we didn't talk to anybody. Um, so, I mean. I did that, speak to the FBI about it. Yeah, I did. When he yeah. interviewed me yeah, too, so just to make sure they, they were aware. Yep, same here. Something that's come up for me, I don't know if it's come up for you. Do you have a hard time trusting people right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that uh, yeah. quite a bit. Um, just you kind of lose lose faith in humanity, like not wanting to, really just not wanting to be close to anybody um, has been really hard. Um, I mean, we thought we thought we knew him, and obviously we didn't. So. Mm -mm. You know, when you go online, though, and you look at their pictures, that's what we kind of did with Shanann's Facebook page. They look very in love. You know, they seem like a very in love uh, kind of couple, at least on social media. You know, is is that what you saw in real life, too? Or is, did you see mm -hmm. anything else? No, that's, that's exactly how they were around us. I mean, it was always hands all over, you know, one another. And um, we always, it was always fun laughing. Um, so yeah, I mean, there was no, not once when we hung out with them was it like, you know what I mean? There was no, there was no aggression, no mm -hmm. anger, no like snarky side comments, nothing yeah. like that. Like it was just, it was fun and easy. Lighthearted. I mean, like even if the, if Chris did something a little like prepare something for food wrong, it was more uh like poke fun at him like, right uh, it was never um i mean they, they just seemed yeah like a happy couple you know it's weird is i find myself even smiling and laughing <laughs> that's not about your memory but yeah the person you thought you knew way back when and to you that is still chris that's this this person out here that's now that we know and we see in the news that's not the chris you know yeah yeah i mean yeah it's too it seems like it's two completely different people at this point like yeah yeah it's just hard you know no like just being with him and seeing how he was like he never he he never once like broke down crying or like like I just feel I don't know like it's just weird like I feel like if we had went out to his house and he turned us away and shut us out then we'd been like oh this is weird, but he welcomed us in just like normal. Like it, it was, it was another day with Chris. I mean, just on his phone, trying to figure out what to do, and you know, just trying to manage conversations through you know everyone out of town. And um, 
everything was normal other than him being, you know, you could tell he was obvious. It seemed like. He seemed distressed. He, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, obviously it was guilt. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Instead of worry. Um, you know, did they, did they never talk to you guys about maybe marital problems or anything like that? Or like, hey, we like had this argument, you know, or. I mean, Shanann, Shanann and I spoke very frequently and, you know, we, we discussed things um, about their marriage and I discussed things about our marriage like it was just the normal you know married couple ups and downs ups and downs that we have um, it was never anything where I thought she was scared or terrified or no matter what she said she just talked about how much she loved him and how he was her rock Obviously, a lot of information is coming out about Chris and sometimes Shanann now. We learned that back in 2015, they filed for bankruptcy. Did you guys know that? Did y'all ever talk financial stuff? I mean, I was never a part of anything. Um, Shanann and I, I Shanann and I had discussed it, but it was never, I mean, it was so long ago that, you know, it was like she would bring it up that we had to file bankruptcy, um, and all of that other stuff, but it was, it kind of ended there. It wasn't, like, currently we're having problems. We heard from some, I, I believe it was a family member back in North Carolina that told us that Shanann had lupus. Did you guys ever hear, or did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She, she did have lupus? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's something she struggled with for a while, but um, since we've met her, it's mostly been under control. Yeah, she had she had her rough days for sure, um, just with any health condition. But um, for the most part, she she really had it under control, and she was she was thriving in her life. She like she wasn't she wasn't down on herself, saying, "Hey, I have this illness in my life. I'm gonna moan and groan about it." She was like, "I want to live my life to the fullest," and and that exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. And then she worked for something called Drive. Right. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. exactly. <laughs> I'll pretend that wasn't a shameless plug. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I know that recently, speaking of Drive, um, Chris had started using mm -hmm. the uh, patch or the supplement, right? He like actually lost quite a bit of weight with it. Yeah. Did you guys notice any change in his personality after? started doing that or no I mean by the time we kind of met with Chris he was already pretty well into his like um he, he was already lost a bunch of the weight you know what I mean so I mean we never saw him in his bigger days um, you know what I mean um so for us I mean it was always Chris I mean there was nothing it was, yeah there was, it was just it was always him he did, um, he lost a little bit of weight, well, a lot of bit of weight, um, after we met him, just because him and Nick started running together and all of that stuff, but that was, I don't know. This next question, I'm not going to lie, it's a question I don't want to ask, it's just something yeah. I have to. They never talked to you guys about, like, relationship troubles, none of them were having an affair, there wasn't a mistress, anything like that. No. Not to, I mean, Chris, Chris and I never talked about that kind of stuff anyway, so, yeah. Shanann had jokingly mentioned it, um, but honestly, she wasn't, she wasn't worried. Um, but, you know, when your husband doesn't answer your text messages as a woman, your thought process just goes to the, the wrong things, so. That's what happens. Sometimes she texts and he wouldn't text back. I mean, it, I mean, that's just an example of something, you know, um, but that was pretty much the extent of, of what we were doing, um, of what she talked about. Seriously. No, no, it was never a serious concern of hers. Kind of the 
way you're breathing is just going through pictures and yeah um I had so many good times with them god her daughter just loved them so much um I just yeah, I guess that's my way of grieving. Hey, get out from behind them, bro. They're trying to take pictures. Come on. <laughs> Come this way. <laughs> You're welcome. Dude, Come how's on, it going? Kyle. Good. good. Right, have a good day. Dude, you're better than I am. I could do that. <laughs> I don't know if I can ride a bike anymore. No. I <laughs> know. Enjoy your day, man. Um, I'm sure you guys get that a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. We chose the park. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, right. Um, but yeah, so you're going through, you know, all these pictures. And, yeah. I mean, it's so funny because, like, if I didn't know, if I just saw this for the first time, I might think they're your kids. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, they did look a lot like Amelie. <laughs> the blonde hair and just beautiful. But yeah, they, um, we spent a lot of time together. It was, it was a short amount of time that we knew them, but it was amazing. Speaking of your daughter, this is really one of, some, one of my last few questions I have. She's going to have to learn this I know, time. I know. Where do you begin? We have no idea. Like, I just looked at, like, while I was giving her a bath this morning and taking her to school, I just kept looking at her like, how do I tell you that your best friend's gone? Like, I don't know. Like, she she knows, like, we talked to her a little bit, like, Miss Nan and the girls, you know, they're, people are looking for him. We can't find him. So she kind of knows a little bit about that, but I have no idea. Like, I don't know. Right now, I think we're just really focused on processing it ourselves. Um, but, I mean, our, our faces are all over the community. And somebody's going to tell her, and she needs to hear it from us. So, yeah. well, um, I, that's a good question. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we don't. She's five. She's, She's five. five. I mean, I, how do you explain to a five-year-old about any death, <laughs> let alone somebody she knows and loves and... Asks uh, about all the time. Yeah. Um, my last question, you know, the way I described it when I was trying to explain, you know, who you are to these people, is you don't understand this is a gut punch for them. Yeah. And this is, they didn't just lose their friend, they found out their other friend could be responsible. <laughs> Yeah. Is it just like that? I mean, how much worse does that make it? You lost Shanann, you lost these beautiful little girls, and then. I mean, Shanann and the girls are the hardest part of it all. I mean, I mean, we really thought <laughs> Monday night when we kind of learned about all this going on and we were with Chris, we kind of thought. We'll see her tomorrow. We're going, to, we're going to be with the girls tomorrow. So that, I mean, I, I guess I haven't even processed the idea of like our, our friendship with Chris is no longer. Uh, he's kind of like a side thought, I guess. Um, like I see his picture on Facebook, and I just get really mad. Um, Especially his like mug shot, like even in that, he doesn't seem s sad. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm looking from the outside in, but just seeing his mug shot, and I'm just like, who are you? Like, that's not that's not the Chris we thought we knew. And Shanann and those girls and baby Nico just. Wait, the baby had a name. We we found that out from Shanann's brother. Uh, he posted a Facebook post and I guess they're having a the little boy. Yeah. Name 
<laughs> no. no. You think you'll ever sleep again? I'm sure it'll come, but right now it's rough. Um, it's kind of hard for me to be in our house knowing he was there, um, knowing, you know what I mean? Like we, we weren't shy that we were kind of there with Chris trying to be some sort of support for him, just thinking... I mean, in our in our mind, we just had we had no reason to believe that he could do anything. So that's why we were there for him. Oh, man, I feel I mean, bluntly, I just feel so stupid and so betrayed. Um, it's just unreal. Like we even offered our house to him when we weren't there. Yeah, like he he when he left to go pick up his dad from the airport, I gave him our garage code and was just like, you guys are welcome here um, if you need a place to be. Um, we had no idea that, we had no idea that what, what he had done or, yeah. And I just remembered you were supposed to watch the girls this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were, they were gonna come over and spend the weekend with Amelie. I was excited to, uh, I mean, that would have been Amelie's first sleepover. <laughs> mm. If you're not sleeping, what are you doing? Laying there? Yeah, <laughs> thinking. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what I'm doing, just kind of like, kind of like what Amanda was saying, kind of going back through the past few days with Chris and think, like, were there things that he was doing that we should have been more apparent of? But we just thought we were doing the right thing by being by his side because we knew kind of no one else was going to be um, and at the time for no kind of good reason um, I, I, so. I think I got everything I just want to make sure yeah. that I think we got everything I, okay. just, I don't want to keep I mean the biggest th I mean we we contemplated a lot this morning because we knew we were going to get kind of bombarded with calls for media and we we contemplated not doing it uh, but then we were just like Really, we want people to know. We we honestly had no idea, and and when I talked to Shanann's mom this morning, I apologized. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm so sorry. Like we didn't know. Like we thought we were doing the right thing, and I'm so sorry that for the perspective you have of us now. Like, uh, and the best thing that came out of it was. I don't know if it was, I, I think I was on speakerphone, so I, it was either her or somebody else, and they were like, we get it, and we don't hold it against you. And that was, that was a really big relief, knowing, as of right now, I mean, I don't know, it's, that's all I can do is say I'm, we're sorry that we, we defended him on social media, we, we really had no idea that he was capable of doing something like we I hate it I hate all of this you guys aren't bad people not at all not from at all what I can tell and yeah. I'm, I'm getting better at that <laughs> um, I think so you did talk to the family though Sh so Shanann's mom called me this morning um, to make sure we had Dieter um, and to make sure sh she wanted our word that we were going to take good care of him because Dieter's the last thing they have, um, and they want they want to <laughs> they want to take him home, um, and so I did. I he's in he's he's part of our family right now. He's going to be taken care of, and uh, I told her like at any point when if they come out, they want to see Dieter. Like let us know. We'll drop everything. We'll we'll come get him. Like whatever they need. Um, but that's when I decided like I. I need to apologize. Like, I, I can't imagine what you think of Amanda and I, and I'm so sorry. So. Just know how much we... how much we loved Shanann and Bella and Cece. It was... They were, I, they were family. They spent Thanksgivings with us and Fourth of Julys and all the holidays. Yeah.
It's unreal. Sure. No, yeah. That's okay. No, I mean, the the only kind of difference I saw change in confidence was with his running ability. Um, I had been running for quite a bit more time than he was, and he was just getting into it. So, uh, you know, I would text him, hey, I'm going to go for a seven-mile run. Uh, and then he, you know, after that, he would be like, yeah, I just ran seven miles. Or, yeah, I, just, I mean, that, but not, like, personality, like, out in the uh, out in the world you know what I mean it didn't seem like he was yeah that part didn't change it was no. always shy Chris so. and then as a woman you know when, when we've heard that he was like he confessed I was with a reporter and I was like you know my fear is I'm going to marry a guy like that oh. you know? and so my question as an outsider is when you see them together are you like oh couple goals relationship goals do you like get that vibe when you look at them for sure yeah. They were so happy. They they went on getaways all the time. Um, just them two alone together. They, like Nick mentioned before, they they were always hugging or holding hands or kissing, and they had they had the perfect family. It seemed. It seemed. <laughs> Obviously not. He was, actually. Um, <laughs> Nick and I had been talking about having a second child um, for quite some time. And, you know, Shan was, she was always, I mean, on our side, uh, you know, pressuring Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, and just, just really supportive of it. Um, and then Shanann and I were, we were, I don't know, going to get our nails done or something one day, and she told me that Chris, that night before, told her he wanted another child, um, and she was she was all on board, and we talked about being pregnant together and going through all of all the ups and downs of pregnancy, having our babies be best friends. So it. Yes, her pregnancy was planned. And you can just give a, you can just give a, a one word answer on this next one, I just to dispel what we see on social media. Because warning, don't look on social media. <laughs> I know. But a big question is, was the baby his? Yes, one hundred percent. There's no doubt about it. I'm sorry to ask that. No, we I get it. I mean, so much stuff comes out on social media. I mean. Apparently, Amanda was having an affair with Chris. We learned that today on social yeah. media. Yeah, I learned like, that. Like, come today. on, like, so, uh, so we get it. Like, rumors go around, but they're not true. I should have known she didn't take her phone with her. That should have been it. <laughs> Always. We would. I have so many pictures <laughs> of her on her phone. <laughs> we would, you know, we would spend. I mean, a lot of our weekend nights at their house, uh, having dinner and stuff, <clears throat> playing Uno, uh, and every time it came to Shanann's turn, we'd be like, hey, pay attention. Like, right. It's your turn. <laughs> it's let's your turn go. Let's go. <laughs> Facebook, yeah, Facebook. For sure. I mean, I mean, her whole business was ran through social, social media. media. So I mean, that's what she was doing. We talked a little bit about the girls for sure. I can't remember if we talked about Shanann though. Um, but I mean, Shanann, I mean, I'll just, I mean, she was, she, she was a leader um, and she was always there to help um, give my wife advice whenever. Um, 
just randomly text, I love you, hope you're having a good day. Um, I mean, she was just a, she was a people person and people were drawn to her. Um, and I think that's why, I mean, we say we're close friends with her, but we're not the only close friends to her. She has close friends all over the state, all, you know, because um, everyone feels this really drawn bond with her um, because of who she is. Um, she loves people and loves helping people and um, she just wanted the best. I mean, and if she could somehow give advice on how to do it or even be there helping us do it, she, she was there, so. She was, she was amazing. There's nobody in the world like Shanann Walker.